Hi, my name's Callum. I'm one of the board members of You Can Be a Doctor, and I'm here today to talk a wee bit about exam technique, and in particular, multiple choice questions, or MCQs. Now, they form a big part of your examinations at high school, and an even bigger part of exams in medical school. So hopefully this tutorial will be helpful, not just now, but also for the university career that follows. What we're going to do today is take a look at some multiple choice questions from the 2016 Higher Biology past paper, and I'm going to show you some tricks about how you can analyse the question to try and narrow down the answer, even if you don't know quite what the content means. Now there really is no substitute for knowing your stuff in these exams, and revision is the best tool to do well in, in exams like this, but hopefully this tip will help with those questions we all come across where you just don't know the answer. Now if you have time, it would be really helpful, I think, to work through questions 1 to 11 of section 1 of that 2016 Higher Biology paper, which is available on the SQA website, before we go ahead and I tell you about how I've worked out some of the answers. I think that would help you to get as much as you can from this video. Now whether you've done that or not, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to talk through how we can narrow down some of the answers with a wee bit of knowledge and a wee bit of exam technique. If we look at question 1, first of all, um, we can see we've got a diagram of a DNA strand mutating into another strand. And we're asked to identify the type of mutation. Now the longhand way of doing that is to go through each base pair and compare them and work out exactly what's changed. That's definitely doable, but it takes quite a long time. Another option is to look at the answers. So we can see that deletion or insertion would move the base strands along and change the length. So we can immediately rule those out because they're the same length before and after. Similarly, inversion is going to lead to a huge change and that clearly hasn't happened at a quick glance. So we can rule that out too. And that leaves us with number or letter B as the correct answer. So without even really understanding what it means, we can tell it's going to be the right answer. In question two, we've got what is quite a typical type of question. So you've got two or three statements all lumped together in four different options. And these questions are incredibly confusing and you have to read them really closely to make sure that you've selected the right one. Now looking at these, we can see immediately that template strand is in three of the answers and primers is also in three. That makes it very likely that both of those are going to be in the correct answer. And so immediately we can rule out D and C. That makes this question a 50-50. Um, and there isn't really a way of knowing or narrowing it down beyond that other than knowing the answer, uh, which is A, DNA polymerase. Question three is a bit of a math question. Um, and again, these are quite common in, in higher exams. It's worth remembering that they're generally designed so that the calculation isn't the bit that's going to trip you up. So it's usually quite simple numbers. And we can see here we've got a five and a thousand and a million. All of those are multiples of five, so we know the answer is going to be a multiple of five as well. And we've got only multiples of five here. The next thing to consider is that 50 and 55 are very close together. So the likelihood is one of those two is going to be the correct answer. Now, if you look here, you've got a five and a thousand, so you'd you be heading towards 50 minutes probably, purely with exam technique. And if you do the calculation, um, that's what you'll find is the correct answer, 50 minutes. This is question four, which asks you to look at some graphs. But actually, the first thing I did was look at this table here. So it's another one of these statements, a bit like question two, where it's got multiple statements in different orders. And again, it's really confusing. The first thing to do is look for duplication. So if we look here, we can see disruptive is twice in that column, stabilizing is twice in this column, um, and directional is twice in this column. Now, what that tells us is the one that we've underlined all three is B. So the most likely one to be correct in column one is the one that's there twice. The most likely one to be correct in column two is the one that's there twice. And the most likely one to be correct in column three is the one that's there twice. So that gives us B as our answer. And in fact, that is the correct answer. When I did this question, um, when I was trialing it, I didn't even know what those terms meant. And I was still able to get the correct answer just through exam technique. Question five is a question that's really about counting. Um, so we've got the African leopard here and it's asking about common ancestors. Um, you can tell from the phylogenetic tree that they all have a common ancestor and it's basically a question of counting up each of the other ones. 
So the answer is 12, remembering that the African leopard isn't its own ancestor. This question starts to get a little bit more complicated. Um, and again, the simple way to do it is to count how many differences there are exactly between each of these and then each of these. Um, and actually, you could do that quite simply without really any huge challenge coming to that. So there's one change per lineage per 5 million years. So 20 million years divided by 5 is 4, and then times 2 is 8. So that's the correct answer. In terms of exam technique there, perhaps not as helpful, but this is simply a, a calculation question. So it's about logically following through how many differences there are. Question seven, with a little bit of knowledge, we can quite quickly narrow this down. So we can tell from the, the headers that the type of inhibition and the binding to active site, the most likely thing is um, that they both don't bind the active site. And actually that, that is the case. Once you know that, actually this third column isn't particularly useful because actually we know that competitive inhibition binds the active site. So that has to be the correct answer. And question eight, this is something as a doctor I really don't know very much about. We don't do much about frogs in medical school. Um, but the one tip I would have here is that we can see the incomplete double and complete double. That rather suggests there's going to be an even number of chambers. And this suggests there's going to be an uneven number of chambers. Frogs apparently have three chambers in their heart. So but that at least narrows it down to a 50-50. In this question, it's um, really about looking at exactly the wording of the question. So the second word there is unexpected. And if we look at our answers, we can see that unexpected things aren't daily and they aren't predictable or predictive. So A and B, we can immediately rule out. With what's left, most of you will probably know that hibernation is over winter and not in a period of drought and probably not in South America, um, which leaves us with the remaining answer C, aestivation, um, which is the correct answer. And question 10, um, it's a wee bit of a complicated question, but probably the best thing to do is just to look straight at that table again. So we can see here we've got some kind of reaction is going on, and we've got appearance of methylene blue after 20 minutes. Glucose is colourless after 20 minutes. It's got rid of all of that blue colour, which suggests that that's the fastest reaction of the options. So when we look here, the question is about the rate of respiration, and we know glucose is going to be fastest. So the quickest thing to do is look for one that gives you that as the answer. So the rate of respiration is, in fact, higher with glucose than with lactose. And that means that question C is the right answer. So I did that without even actually reading that main text. Now question 11 is one where you really you do just have to know the answer. Um, the only kind of exam technique tip I would have to suggest is that if we look at these, only one of the answers contains number two. Um, so it's probably the wrong one, and actually the citric acid cycle doesn't um, involve phosphorylation of intermediates and the generation of ATP. The correct answer is in fact number A, one only, which is glycolysis. So that one's a wee bit trickier to narrow down if you don't know the details of the electron transfer chain and of glycolysis, um, but you've at least ruled out one of those questions. So you can see I've taken a sample there of 11 questions. Um, and it's been a long time since I did higher biology, but actually just with exam technique, by analyzing the question and by looking at what answers they've suggested, it's really often possible to narrow down to either a 50-50 or even the correct answer without sometimes even reading the entire question. Now, I'm not recommending that as a, as a go-to strategy. Um, and as I said, knowing your stuff is really the most important thing. But for those questions where you don't know the answer, um, it is often helpful just to narrow it down a bit. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Um, remember, you can follow us on Twitter and like us on Instagram, and there's more information available on youcanbeadoctor.co.uk. If you have a specific question about applying to medical school or anything else to do with being a doctor, you can email advice at youcanbeadoctor.co.uk, and our team of medical students and doctors will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you.